I have here a small bolt and I also have an Allen key. And uh, the Allen key is double-ended so we can basically put it into the head of this and use it to tighten something up. Now, um, what this video is all about is a moment and how we can maybe look at the force applied uh, at a certain distance away from an axis of rotation and then the turning effect this produces, which we call a moment. And if you have an Allen key and you want to get it really tight and maybe there's something which is really tight to undo, we can use this basically as a force multiplier. We can apply a small force to long distance and therefore we have a large moment, uh, which is the thing that actually undoes this. So the textbook definition of a moment is uh, the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the axis or the point of rotation. And I'm going to talk about that more in about a minute. Now, in terms of symbols, well, we can use a capital M for moment. A little m stands for mass, and we use, tend to use a big M for the moment. Uh, and this is equal to the force, which is uh, just F, multiplied by the distance, which is X. Now you might be familiar with maybe an example of a seesaw. So we've got uh, maybe uh, something here which is uh, nicely uh, evenly balanced or in equilibrium. And uh, we maybe have uh, a large force acting at a small distance, uh, which is balanced by a small force acting at a large distance. Now this always tends to be uh, fairly straightforward. We have vertical forces downwards uh, and we have nice sort of perpendicular distances between uh, the, the force and uh, the pivot. But what I'd like to consider is maybe a bit more of a, a tricky thing. Okay, maybe the force isn't acting down, but it's acting at an angle. Suppose we had a force F, which is acting at an angle of theta to the vertical, and this is uh, acting at a distance of X away from the pivot. Now what I'd like to do is solve this force at an angle and um, basically how we can solve problems like this. And I'm gonna show you two different approaches. Now the first thing, whatever you do, is you must draw a diagram. So, here we go. So I'm going to represent this beam here just as a long straight line. And what I, I have here is my pivot or my fulcrum or my axis of rotation, which is just this kind of a uh, sort of little triangle in here. Now, if I label the force, it's gonna be equal to value of F acting at an angle of theta. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna continue the direction of this force on. And what this is, is this is my line of action. This is a line of action uh, that the force is taking. I'm also going to label my distance x in here. And so far we, we haven't really solved this. But what I'd like to think about is a perpendicular distance from the line of action to my pivot. And if I just draw that in with, uh, again you, you probably should use a bit more, spend a bit more time on this. But here we have basically a 90 degree right angle triangle. And if we know that this angle here is theta, uh, we can think about then, that means this angle in here is theta. So this one's 90 minus theta, which again means that this angle here must also be theta. Now in order to work out the moment, we need to know this perpendicular distance between the, the axis of rotation and the line of action of the force. And if this is the distance of x, we want to know the side here, which I'm just going to call uh, x dash. So we want to know the size of this here. Now, if we think back to uh, Sokotoa, we have a right angle triangle. Now X is a bit like the hypotenuse of that triangle. We've got theta here, so that means this must be the adjacent side and this must be the opposite side. So we've got a, a value of theta, we've got a value of the hypotenuse, and in order to find out the adjacent side, we can use cos. So we can say that cos theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or A is equal to H cos theta. Now in this case here, uh, the value a that we want to know is going to be equal to the value of the hypotenuse which is x multiplied by cos theta. And this just gives us our value uh, x dash which is our um, distance between the pivot and line of action. So if we think about the moment it's going to be equal to the force times x dash which just is the, 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 the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action. So that means the moment in this case is equal to f times x times cos theta. So this is one way of thinking about uh, if we have a force acting at an angle, we can say that the moment is equal to fx cos theta. So the other way to consider this problem is thinking about resolving this force into its vertical component. And then we can look at the vertical components of this force acting at this distance x. So we've got the force over here and we want to know the size of the force, which I'm just going to call f dash, which is acting in this direction. Now again, if we think about this triangle over here, what we have is over here, the longest side is hypotenuse, which is a value of f. We have the adjacent side to this angle, and we have the opposite side. 
And again, we know that uh, cos theta is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Uh, if we want to make A the subject to say that A is equal to H cos theta, we want to know this adjacent side, which we've called sort of F dashed, which is equal to the size of the force F multiplied by cos theta. And uh, if we, again, need to work out the moment, the moment is equal to the uh, force multiplied by the uh, perpendicular distance away, then we can say that uh, the moment in this case is equal to F cos theta multiplied by X. And again, um, if we have something which is acting vertically, maybe rather than at an angle, so we maybe have a very simple case of a long beam, we have a block uh, which has a weight acting downwards, then that means effectively if the force is acting down, the value of theta is zero. And that means cos theta must equal one. So that's why this one here is true, but this one here is maybe a better form of it if we have a, a force acting at an angle. Now it's just worth noting that just because we have a large moment acting on something, it doesn't actually mean it's moving and rotating. For example, here we maybe have a heavy boulder, which has a particularly large weight, which is acting vertically downwards. And this is acting at a certain distance uh, away from uh, maybe this digger over here. However, that doesn't mean that this digger is gonna start tipping over. It just means that there's maybe another moment that we haven't considered. Maybe there's one on the other side where we have again the weight of this digger acting at a certain maybe smaller distance away from uh, the pivot. And what we can have is moments on things which aren't necessarily moving, but they, they may be still in equilibrium. And this is where we have to consider the principle of moments. So for a body in rotational equilibrium, the sum of the anticlockwise moments is equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. And we can basically just summarize this kind of fairly long sentence here with the following. So the sum of the anticlockwise moments is equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. And just, this just means that the body's not going to be rotating one way or the other.